Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to another very important video. Uh, in today's video, we are going to discuss about the different components of bridges, or you can say different parts of a bridge, or you can say different elements of a bridge, right? We will uh, sort out the different names for the different uh, elements of the bridges and there, and then we will discuss about the functions of each component. So the topic is components and functions of a bridge. So before starting and going into the depth, into the components of the bridge, the first thing we must know is that what is the definition of a bridge? What kind of component or a structural member is known as bridge? Actually, a bridge is a structure for carrying road traffic or other moving loads over a deep valley or obstruction such as a river, channel, road or railway, right? This is the simplest way you can define bridge. So bridge can be made up of woods. In old days, uh, bridges are uh, made up of stones too. Uh, nowadays, we use concrete and steel for the construction of a bridge. So this is the basic definition of a bridge. Let's jump into the components. So as you can see in this image, that there are various components of a bridge, right? Such as uh, abandonment, wing walls, girder, piles, pile, and then foundation bearings. So there are a lot of components, pile, pile cape, pile cape. So we will define each of the component one by one. But before starting, to discuss about the functions of each component, we need to know that the bridge is being divided into three major parts. The first one is called superstructure, other is substructure, and the third major part of the bridge is called adjoining structures. Right? So what comes in the superstructure and what comes in the substructure and what comes in the adjoining structures? Superstructure, uh, sorry, first one is substructure. As you can see in this image, the first uh, substructure, the structure of a bridge below the level of bearing. You can see this is the bearing, right? So whatever is below the level of the bearing, we, we will call it substructure right and the above the level of the bearing is called superstructure so the function of the uh, the substructure is to support the superstructure components and transmit their load safely to the subsoil through foundation right this is the main function of uh, substructure so inside substructure the first component comes is abutment, abutment, right? Abutment. So let's see what actually is abutment. You can see the definition that abutments support the ends of the bridge and transfer the loads from the superstructure into the ground. The abutments also support the bearing devices and bake walls. Abutments are usually constructed of concrete. So this is the basic definition of abutments. And it is, also, it is a structure mostly used for bridge and uh, you can see them, these uh, abutment walls in the dams too. So it is a structure, it is a sort of structure mostly used for bridges and dams as a substructure at the end of a bridge span. You can see that it is usually constructed at the end of the bridge span or dam and on that superstructure is rested. You can see that above this bearing level is superstructure, right? As we have already discussed, 
this superstructure directly rests on the abandonment and this is usually constructed at the end span end of the bridge span and it is constructed by using the material concrete and another important point you need to note is that a bridge with a single span has two abutments that offer vertical and lateral support it also plays the role of retaining walls to resist lateral movement of the uh, earthen field of the bridge approach right so these are extra important points you need to remember about the abutments and the next component is pyre it also comes this is the second component in the substructure which is pyre p i e r pyre and pile are two different things right so now we are uh, we are discussing about the pyre function of the pyre what are piles piles provide intermediate support between bridge spans and bridge piles mainly support the bridge superstructure elements and transfer the load to the foundation and pyre must be strong to handle the horizontal as well as the lateral forces and the pyres are known as that's why we uh, we also call pyres as the compression members of the bridge these pyres are known as the compression members if someone asks you the a question that what are the compression members of a bridge you can easily say that the piles are the compression members of the bridge so piles provide intermediate support between two bridge spans bridge piles mainly support the bridge superstructure elements and transfer the load to the foundation piles must be strong to handle the horizontal as well as lateral forces and piles are known as the compression members of the bridge so this is the definition and the functions of the pile and the next component we are going to discuss is the third component in the superstructure which is wing walls so wing walls provide smooth entry of water into the bridge side and provide support and protect the embankment so it is one of the uh, earth retaining structures in the bridge they are located adjacent to the abutments and act as retaining walls in the next slide i will show you an image of wing walls abutment piles and uh, bearing to make it more clear so in coming slide i will show you the pictures or images so the wing wall retains soil for abandonment roadway and approach uh, embankments which can be at a right angle to the abandonment or at different angles it can be at right angle or it can be on different angles too it is not mandatory to um, uh, construct the wing walls at a right angle so things will become more clearer when i will show you the images of these components separately in the next slide and the next and this is the pyre cap on the top of the pyre this cap shape component is known as pyre cap right so now let's go into the superstructure in superstructure the first component is girder or we also mm, uh, call it beam right beams and girders what is the function of girder both beam and girder have a similar function to support the roadway on the roadway which is constructed on the top of the bridge so both have similar functions to support the roadway and prevent bending right the other function is to prevent bending and girder is also one type of beam support where loads are heavy girders are used instead of beam support right whenever uh, there is heavy load 
we will use girders instead of beams of poles. And beams have a rectangular cross section, whereas girders have composed of I-shaped cross sections with uh, two load-bearing flanges and a web for for the stabilization. Right. So this is the difference between uh, girder and beam, but the functions of both are same. And the next component we are going to discuss is the bearing. Bearing also comes in the superstructure components and bearing is provided between the bridge girder. This is the bridge girder, right? Bridge, it is provided between bridge girder and fire cap. The main function of the bearing is to allow free movement or vibration of the top superstructure and reduce effect stress to reach the bridge foundation. So what is the main function? As we know that uh, on bridge, there are a lot of vehicles pass over the bridge and due to the passage of these vehicles, obviously vibration will generate here. And then to stop that vibration to reach to the foundation, these bearings are used. They absorb the moment or vibrations at the top of the superstructure, right? This is the main function of the bearing and it is used in between the pyre cape and superstructure. So you can say that the uh, bearing is provided between the bridge girder and the pyre cape. The main function of the bearing is to allow free movement or vibration of the top superstructure and reduce effect stresses to reach the bridge foundation. Other than this, we have few more components. Sorry, few more components uh, like arches and cables, which we used in the bridges. Arch, uh, you can say that arched and cables both have uh, speci uh, specified uses. Sorry, and arches are used for arch bridges construction, and cable is used for suspension bridges. So arches and cables depends upon the type of bridge you are constructing. For different type of bridge construction, arches and cable play a vital role. And the last part component comes at the top of the bridge for safety, which we call parapet walls and handrails. The parapet is one of the safety components of any bridge, which prevents the vehicles from falling off where there is a drop, right? It is also useful for restricting views, preventing uh, rubbish from passing below and acting as a noise barrier too. So these were the main components of a bridge and the next slide I will show you the actual images of uh, wing walls and then girder and bearing to make it more clear. So this is what we call wing walls. So these wing walls can be at 90 degree angle or can be at other angles too. So you can see in the image to make it more clear as we have discussed that the, um, the main function is that it retains the earth. Right. You can see in the image and they are located adjacent to the abandonments and act as retaining walls. And the wing walls retain soil for abandonment roadways and approach embankments too which can be at right angle to the abandonment or at different angles too so these are wing walls and the second image you can see abutment as we have uh, discussed that the bridge beam or deck directly rests on the abutment and abutment is made up of concrete got it and the next is bearing as we have discussed that the bearing is the component of the bridge which is placed between the girder and the pile cap and the function of the bearing is to minimize or absorb the moment and vibration which have been created on the top of the superstructure due to moment of vehicles so i hope now 
uh, things are clear and these are all components which we were supposed to discuss discuss in today's video and few other components which comes in the third major part of bridge which are adjoining structures right which we have discussed in the earlier part of the video and adjoining structure actually it consists of the approaches and the guard stones right and the approaches it is structured and constructed at the starting or ending of any bridge these are called approaches like this is uh, this may be the end or start of a bridge and approaches are constructed here at the start of the bridge or at the end of the bridge and guard stones they are used to resist traffic on a particular lane or sometimes as road railing but are generally positioned to protect a specific object such as a corner of a street or the side of a gate so these two components come comes in the adjoining structures so that's it that's it for today i hope you guys like the video thank you for watching see you guys in next video with other important topics so don't forget to subscribe to the channel see you guys in next video till then goodbye